You know, <clears throat> one thing about following this channel is you never know when I'm going to revisit something I started or when I'm going to go back to something that I started. And that's what's happening here. Pat Verbeek. Uh, not in the Hall of Fame. Likely doesn't make the Hall of Fame. So why do I have him in mind? See, now, the first thing I did when I started this series was write what I felt was a wrong in Tiger Williams. Not being acknowledged as a Hall of Famer, just for the fact that he's bloody famous, and he was a pretty good player, too. Verbeek's different. Uh, Verbeek, the little ball of hate, as named by Glenn Healy. Yes, I double-checked that. Glenn Healy came up with that name. Big ball of hate, Ray Ferraro. Another guy who's not in the Hall of Fame, and you could make an argument should be. So... Why? Let's take a look at his stats. Yeah, I wrote them all on the board because uh, I know there's an internet that you can look stuff up. But how how are you going to get it in all different various colors and, and, and fonts? Yeah, I write in different fonts because I'm special. I, I don't. I just make them crap up. So, the start of his career, New Jersey. Which is why I'm wearing a New Jersey Devils jersey. Um, and, and it was unremarkable to start. He's drafted 43rd overall in the draft. There's no big deal made of him. Uh, he makes the league the next season, plays six games, five points, eight penalty minutes. It kind of be his career thing. Goals, penalty minutes. Make sure you get the goals and the penalty minutes. His first few seasons, though, you, you don't see it. So his... his first full season his rookie season 79 games 47 points 158 penalty minutes solid 20 goal scorer following season he falls back 15 goals 33 points 162 penalty minutes then his goal totals go 25 35 46 and 26 while he's a member of the devils the year he gets 46 goals is the first year that the new jersey devils organization had ever made the playoffs they didn't make the playoffs as um, the Kansas City Scouts, or as the Colorado Rockies, this was it. So there you go. All done. No, we're not all done. So his career totals, he's the only player in league history to score 500 goals and get 2,500 penalty minutes. And I want you to think about that. Nobody in the current NHL is on pace for 2,500 penalty minutes. I don't think it'll ever happen again. So his career total of 2,905, goal total of 522, and an impressive games played total of 1,424. He, to me, epitomizes what an NHLer, ideally what their career should look like if they're, if they're a power forward. And I don't know how often that term was thrown at a guy who's 5'9". A little ball of hate, remember. He's currently the assistant general manager for the Tampa Bay Lightning. He'd also worked as a scout for the Detroit Red Wings. Verbeek plays in two All-Star games, one in 95-96 as a member of the Rangers, one in 90-91 with the Whalers. He had 43 goals that year. He had 44 the year before. Penalty minutes, look at this, 228, 246, 243. The guy's a legend in Hartford. And he had a Stanley Cup in 1999 with... The Dallas Stars. And the year after they won that Stanley Cup, he moved on to Detroit. And it was one of those reasons that I felt uh, Dallas had a really difficult time repeating, ironically, in a Stanley Cup final against New Jersey a year later. So he went to Detroit, 22 goals, 48 points. This was when Detroit was doing their best to shore up their veterans so as veterans left bring in more veterans and Verbeek at that point unfortunately was winding down he had 15 his last year with Detroit and then he went back and signed with Dallas for one more year 64 games 7 goals 20 points 72 penalty minutes to reach that 2900 goal he didn't come back for another year to try to hit 3000 probably could have he probably could have hit 3000 the impressive thing with Verbeek is his goal totals being at 500, his penalty minute totals being at 2,900, and other than being called the little ball of hate and the fact that he fought a lot, I have a hard time remembering a lot of really dirty plays he did. Oh, he was rat-like. So if anybody's going to say, oh, he was a rat, he was rat-like. He had his moments. But what I remember with Verbeek was I, I never heard any accusation of him being lazy. 
I don't remember any accusations of him not being a good team player. And like I said, his stats measure up against uh, anybody who gets both power, like points and penalty minutes. You look at guys like Lucic, although Lucic's penalty minutes totals have been dropping because guys don't want to fight him anymore. They're tired of getting beat up. And, and Lucic's role has, has changed. When Verbeek started scoring more, he also started taking more penalties. His penalty minutes went up. It's impressive. I mean, that's about three full games in the penalty box. Right there. No, four. 246. Come on, divide it by 60, Shannon. That's four. Wow. It's not that early in the morning. So, that's the thing. And that's that's the kind of career that I want to see enshrined in my Hall of Fame. Because this guy, for me, absolutely is a hockey guy Hall of Famer. In that I don't think he ever makes the NHL Hall of Fame. But it could be argued he should. He was a damn good player. He was never an elite player. And that's why you'll probably see other players in this category in my Hall of Fame. So for Pat Verbeek, who was always one of my favorites, he's the second guy enshrined in the Hockey Guy Hall of Fame. So... I don't remember seeing that as a prediction when people were predicting who I was going to put in next. I saw Chris Osgood. I saw a few other names that likely will get in. But for now, it's Pat Verbeek. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. And and just soak that in. Just soak in that I, I hand wrote down all of his totals. So, you know, that's some heavy lifting I did this morning. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.